Hi, nerdlings, and welcome back to the endomembrane system. Today, we're going to be discussing lysosomes, peroxisomes, vacuoles, and vesicles. So lysosomes, these are membrane-bound sacs of hydrolytic enzymes that digest macromolecules. Remember, hydro means water, and lytic means the same thing as lyse. Okay, it means to split apart. So we're splitting things apart with water in these lysosomes. They are enzymes and membranes of lysosomes that are synthesized by the rough ER and transferred to the Golgi apparatus. So those lysosomes are formed in the endoplasmic reticulum. They're transported into the Golgi apparatus where they're sorted and packaged into the way they're supposed to be. And then they're exported by the trans side of the Golgi apparatus and they become fully functional lysosomes that can function within the cell. These are also only found in animal cells. So the function of them is basically like a little stomach for the cell. Again, lyso means breaking things apart, some means body. They're also the cleanup crew of the cell. Lysosomes were first discovered by this sexy young guy whose name was Christian de Dove in the 1960s. Lysosomes function by fusing to food vacuoles. Polymers are then digested into monomers through the process of hydrolysis, using water to split those polymers into monomers. They then pass to the cytosol to become nutrients. So right here we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum forming a transport vesicle that goes into the cis side of the Golgi apparatus. It's then packaged and sorted and it forms lysosomes which exit the trans side of the Golgi apparatus. These lysosomes will then fuse with a food vacuole. So over here we have food being taken into the cell through the process of phagocytosis. Remember phago sounds kind of like phago food. So phagocytosis is taking in food to the cell. So these lysosomes will then fuse to those food vacuoles, break down those polymers into monomers or nutrients that the cell can then process and use. They're also called the cell recycler. They recycle dead or dying parts of organelles within the cell. These are where old proteins go to die. So again, this is an example of a lysosome fusing with a food vacuole and digesting it into monomers that the cell can use. The other example, like we were saying, is whenever dead or dying cell organelles need to be recycled. So in this case, it's fusing with a mitochondria, breaking it back down into proteins that can be recycled in the cell. So lysosomal enzymes work best at a pH of 5. The organelle actually creates its own custom pH, but how? It does this through proteins in the lysosomal membrane pumping hydrogen ions from the cytosol into the lysosome. But why does it do this? Because enzymes are very sensitive to pH. And enzymes are proteins. Proteins are sensitive to pH. So what happens to a protein if you put it in a pH that it does not function optimally in? The protein, which is here, is going to fall apart back into its primary structure. Now what's the technical term for when all of those bonds are broken? If you're thinking that the protein denatures, that's the correct term. So if the protein gets exposed to very high temperatures, or if it gets exposed to a pH out of its optimum pH range, a lot of times the protein will denature back into its primary structure. So why evolve digestive enzymes which function at a pH that are different from the pH at the cytosol? Basically, digestive enzymes won't function well <coughs> if they leak into the cytosol. You don't want to digest yourself. So when things go wrong, Sometimes lysosomes don't work the way that they're supposed to, and it causes problems. When lysosomes don't work the way they're supposed to, they don't digest biomolecules. Those biomolecules just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate into those lysosomes. Those lysosomes then get bigger and bigger and bigger. This causes disruption in cell and organ function in people. 
there's a lysosomal storage disorder that's called Tay-Sachs disease. This is fatal. Most people that have Tay-Sachs disease die before the age of five. Sometimes, however, lysosomes are supposed to kill cells. Programmed cell death is called apoptosis. This is definitely a term that you need to know, so make sure you know that apoptosis is programmed cell death. It plays a critical role in the programmed destruction of cells in multicellular organisms. It's basically like an auto-destruct mechanism, or cell suicide. Some cells have to die in an organized fashion, especially during embryological development. For example, the space between your fingers during embryological development, cells have to die in order for these spaces to be formed. Another example is that if a cell grows improperly, there's always a self-destruct mechanism which is triggered to remove that damaged cell. However, an example of that not working is when cancer overrides this and enables tumor to grow. Tumors are just unchecked growth of cells. So the example right here, when we were talking about earlier, how the program cell death needs to occur in order for those spaces in between your fingers to um, happen is called syndactyly, and that's what's occurring right here. The next organelle we're going to talk about is peroxisomes. They're another digestive enzyme sac. These are found in both plant and animal cells. They break down fatty acids into sugars. Sugars are much easier to use and store as a source of energy. They're also easier to transport. Peroxisomes are responsible for detoxifying the cell as well. It detoxifies the cell from alcohol and other poisons, like any drugs and stuff like that. Again, things you should not be having in your system. As a byproduct, peroxisomes, surprise, surprise, produce hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide must be broken down into the cells or by the cells. Peroxide is broken down by several different enzymes, one of them being peroxidase. That's something you worked with in your lab. Another enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide is called catalase, which is found in yeast and beef liver. The last two types of organelles we're going to talk about are vacuoles and vesicles. Their function is to be little transfer ships. Okay, they're transporting different things around. We have food vacuoles, which use phagocytosis, and they fuse with lysosomes. We have contractile vacuoles. These occur in freshwater protists, and they're used to pump excess water out of the cell. We have central vacuoles that occur in many mature plant cells. Functions of vacuoles in plants include storage. They stockpile proteins and inorganic ions. They deposit metabolic byproducts. They store pigments. They're also used for storing defensive compounds against herbivores. What that means is basically they store some type of poison. So if an herbivore, maybe like a cow or a goat or a you, eats the plant, you'll get sick from it. That discourages you from eating that type of plant again and it enables that plant species to reproduce and be successful as a species. It also functions as a selective membrane. It helps to control what goes into or out of it. So this concludes our lecture for today over peroxisomes, lysosomes, vesicles, and vacuoles. Stay tuned for the next lecture, nerdlings. I'll see y'all later.